All right, good evening. Uh, City of Norco, City Council regular meeting uh, agenda for Wednesday, October 3rd, 2018 uh, for the uh, call to order. Councilmember Newton. Councilmember Hanna? Here. Councilmember Bash? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Grunmeyer? Yes. Mayor Hoffman? Yes. All present. Are there any speaker cards for closed session? No speaker cards, Mayor. Uh, we're going to recess to uh, closed session then. Thank you, reconvening public session. Reports of action taken in closed session. City Attorney? Yes, uh, the uh, uh, City Council considered the matters listed on the agenda in closed session, and there are no reportable actions. And please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, led by Councilmember Berwyn Hanna, and then after us, remain standing for the invocation. Ready begin. Pledge, Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Remain standing for uh, Pastor Daniel. Aye. From the uh, Beacon Hills Swahili Fellowship. Yes. Yeah, yes, for prayer. Yeah. Almighty God, we thank you uh, tonight for your blessings. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for congregating us here today. We bless the name of the Lord for giving our leaders this opportunity to serve your people here in the city. In the name of Jesus, your word says, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. We pray today that you are going to bless our leaders here. Bless our city. Bless our state. Bless our nation, for this is the promise of God, that any nation that recognizes God, you will bless that nation. Start with our city and our leaders here, praying also that you would bless our city here, providing for all the projects that our city has in the name of Jesus, supply to your to the needs of the city according to your riches in glory in Christ Jesus for this is the promise of God we thank you for the agenda of today pray that you are going to give our leaders here to deliberate the agenda of the day to build this city to and for the glory of God we thank you today we glorify the name of the Lord for it is in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ that we pray and all God's people say Amen. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor Daniel. All right, now let's see who's here. And I have to prevention. And Brian, if you want I I Scott has for some reason, I know where he's at. He's on flood watch. That's uh, Scott Lane from our battalion chief in the fire department. And so I'm going to go down there. And we'll, I'll read this for everybody. Our. Uh, Fire takes, uh, they wear dual hats. They're doing uh, flood watch or flash flood watch down there in uh, Horse Thief Canyon and part of the Holy Fire area. So, this being Fire Prevention Week, uh, the city of Norco, California, is committed to ensuring the safety and security of all those living in and visiting Norco. Fire is a serious public safety concern both locally and nationally, and the home is a location where people are at greater risk for fire. As reported, the majority of U.S. fire deaths, four out of five, occur at homes each year. According to the National Fire Protection Association, fire departments in the United States responded to 352,000 home fires, which have killed 2,735 people in 2016, and that fire deaths per 1,000 homes was 100% higher in 2016 than in 1980. 
Norco residents should identify places in their home where fires can start, eliminate those hazards, as well as install smoke alarms in every sleeping room, outside each separate sleeping area, and on every level of the home. Working smoke alarms cut the risk of dying in reported homes, fires in the half. In preparation for an emergency, Norco residents should have a home fire escape plan and practice it. And when the alarm sounds, respond by going outside immediately to the designated meeting place. Norco residents are responsive to public education measures and can take action to increase their safety from fire, especially in their own homes. The 2018 Fire Prevention Week theme, look, listen, learn, be aware, fire can happen anywhere, effectively serves to remind us that we need to take personal steps to increase our safety from fire. Therefore, I, Ted Hoffman, Mayor of the City of Norco, on behalf of the City Council, do hereby proclaim October 7th to the 13th as the 2018 Fire Prevention Week. Thank you. And we'll get this to Scott and the crew over there, all right? All right. That way you can take pictures with them. All right. Why well, I'm up here, I think my Rib Ribbon Week people are here, right? Come on up. Hey, Robin, you want to join me? This is your thing, right, Ribbon, isn't it? You're pretty good at, she's a resident academia, so. How y'all doing tonight? Good? All right. Okay, Robin and Amber. All right, you want to read the part of this or you want to read real? Sure. You can, you, you get, you've been there every, every so year. So it's my pleasure to present this proclamation for Red Ribbon Week. So whereas cities across America have been plagued by numerous problems associated with alcohol, tobacco, and other drug use, and whereas substance abuse is particularly damaging to one of our most valuable resources, our children, and a contributing factor in the three leading causes of death for teenagers, which is accidents, homicides, and suicides. And whereas the red ribbon was chosen as a symbol commemorating the week of DEA Enrique Kiki Camarena, who was murdered in 1985 in the line of duty, and has come to represent his belief that one person can make a difference. And whereas the red ribbon celebration was established by Congress in 1988 to promote this belief and encourage a drug-free lifestyle involvement in drug prevention efforts and whereas in 2018 Red Ribbon Week theme life is your journey travel drug-free promotes family and individual responsibilities for living healthy drug-free lifestyles without illegal drugs or the use of illegal or legal drugs and whereas the Corona Norco Unified School District further commits its support and resources to ensure the success of Red Ribbon Week and year-round alcohol tobacco and other drug abuse abuse prevention efforts. Uh, I, in partnership with Mayor Hoffman, on behalf of the City Council, do proclaim October 23rd through the 31st of 2018, Red Ribbon Week in the City of Norco. Do you want to say anything first? Would you, Amber or Robin, want to speak? Hello, thank you, City Council, for allowing us here this evening. We just, um, uh, you were each presented a red folder, so the flyers are in there. We'll be brief. We just want to invite you all to come out and judge the Red Ribbon Contest, posters and creative writing. The dates are on your flyers. Um, Amber has a couple oh, yeah. things to share. So, as it was said before, the theme for this um, year's Red Ribbon Week is Life is Your Journey, Travel Drug Free. So the co there is a contest um, that they will be judging, hopefully. And we also have a family fun festival we are hosting Sunday, October 28th, 2018, from tw 12 p.m. to 4 p.m. in Promenade Park. So that is also something we encourage you all to go to. Please review your folders, and we hope okay. to see you there. Okay. We're going to get a picture on there in the front. In the uh, and, and if you give it to Matt there, he'll take one there for you. And I, Robin, did you notice what the grand prize was there? Our resident Mickey Mouse fan.
Thank you. I'm going to add a little one other thing. Again, I know he's not here, but he just celebrated his 100th birthday. Was Gene Pritchard, and we celebrated with him in August when the Navy band was here because he's a World War II Navy veteran, and he just had his birthday last weekend. Turned 100 years old. So Eugene Pritchard, hoorah for you! All right. So I know. Kevin, you went to his birthday party, huh? He looks pretty good for 100, huh? Yeah, he does. Yes, he does. Moving into city council, city communications reports on regional boards and commissions. Berwin, I'm going to start with you. Believe it or not, I don't have anything to report. We have meetings next week. Okay, Robin. Nothing to report, Mr. Mayor. Are oh, you guys making this easy, Greg? Good evening. Uh, CDA board meeting tomorrow uh, afternoon. Nothing else to report. And Kevin. I'm sorry. Uh, I had nothing to report from the RCA. Uh, that was pretty quick. I had that Monday. But at WRCOG, Andy, um, one of the things they're talking about, and we have 30 days to, compl to comply with this. I don't know if they've contacted you yet. But what they want to do is... Um, agree or not agree, and we have 30 days, that whether or not WRCOG will collect our TUMP fees. Are you familiar with this? Yes, sir. Can, can, do we need to agendize that to discuss it, or is it something that you... No, I don't think it's something that needs to be agendized. It's mm -hmm. mostly an administrative issue. Uh, so the current arrangement is that uh, cities collect a TUMP, and uh, uh, based on audits that have been performed with respect to the collection of these TUMP fees. Uh, WRCOG has discovered that there are inconsistencies in the way these fees are collected. And therefore, to, uh, to bring about consistency in administration of the fees, uh, WRCOG wants to take over that, uh, uh, that task of collecting the fees. Um, again, cities currently collect the fees and, and send the money to WRCOG. So under the current, under the proposed arrangement is that WRCOG, uh, who actually administers uh, that program, uh, will be responsible for collecting the fees. And uh, uh, the city manager's group recommended that uh, they were OK with that. Um, I don't think any action is required on the part of the city council, except that that might require a change in the TOMF ordinance because uh, uh, to, uh, to the administrative changes. And when that happens, that will be brought to the city council for action. Okay, and I'll do, I have some questions. I'll just call you with them. Um, and then today I went to the uh, Senior Star meeting. And one of the things, Brian, I don't, you know, we, we've tried this before, but is there maybe some way on Veterans Day we might be able to get a We've done this before, but nobody signs up, but maybe it's a notification problem that on uh, Veterans Day that we make available to seniors a way to get to the memorial. We've tried it before, but is there something that's missing? I mean, or is it just something they're not interested in doing? They get there themselves. Right. We do a pre-sign up, mm -hmm. and if we have enough, then we uh, schedule our uh, senior bus to transport them from the senior center to the location and back. Yeah. So we can off we will offer that again to the seniors. It's part of our grant program, so it's it really becomes an issue of them signing up, which they well, never they haven't the last couple. We, of times. we can try to reach out more to the two housing units there and see if maybe we can stir up more interest, both uh, Clark Terrace and Heritage Park, um, so, um, and see if that helps. So. Okay. Thank you. That's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Um, I was a little busier than the other ones then, so... Uh, Last Friday, the uh, League of Cities Riverside County Division of Mayors met, and we discussed uh, things that are pretty... The same all over problems that we have shared together. 
Uh, most of it has to do with the homeless situation along with uh, trying to figure out ways to generate revenues in our city. Um, they did pass on some information about a swag team that works with some of the other homeless teams in the sheriff's department. So I provided that information to Lieutenant Brittick, and he's going to research that more. It's a local group that handles homeless. We'll see what happens on that to see if they, they can work in our area or not. Um, the other thing we talked about at that meeting, I mean at the... Uh, uh, recently was I went to the Western Community Energy Board of Directors meeting. Uh, that is our Norco along with six other cities is uh, formulating trying to do check on feasibility of doing a CCA which is a community aggregate uh, energy program. We have gone through a lot of uh, documentation and set up the uh, rules and regulations and things like that. We are nowhere near implementing or agreeing to it at this time. This is still a feasibility study to see if it actually works. Um, ourselves, along with the city of, of Eastvale, uh, city of Harupa Valley, the city of Hemet, uh, the uh, trying to think about uh, Canyon Lake, uh, Menifee, we're all trying to figure out if this thing is even feasible. It what if it works out right? It will be a cost reduction in electrical costs for the residents. If it doesn't work out right, we're not going to do it. And so by our October 10th meeting, uh, we'll decide if the feasibility is, is correct again or not. So I'll bring on that information when I get it. Um, last night, <coughs> excuse me, last night I represented the city uh, at the Riverside Community College District uh, Board of Ed their board meeting. Uh, we have, if you're not aware of it, uh, the Norco College is trying to implement a photonics program over at the college. Uh, a lot of, it's a real high tech science. It's, it would probably be beneficial to the students, but it's still an experimental science. So before they begin their program, we as a city of Norco, since it's the colleges in our town, we just want to make sure it fits into what we have, our community lifestyle. The fact that they handle and mitigate any problems associated with the implementation of that program and to keep us on board so that we know what's going on. And we're not against higher education, we're not against the program, we just want to make sure it's done correctly and so it's done so that we retain our community lifestyle. We don't become the Silicon Valley of Southern California and that. So just to say, it's all in the infancy stage. They're in the, they're, they're, their trustees and the chancellor are saying the same thing, trying to determine what works best for the students. So we'll keep you posted on that as, as it comes about. And let's see. And then uh, we had a veterans meeting on uh, last week, and I'm going to let Jeff, when he gets up here, talk about the possible veterans um, day ceremony. Okay, I'll let you do that during public comments. And then uh, if next week we have our uh, CRC meeting, and I'll get some briefing on what's going on over there. Lieutenant Brittick uh, advised me a little bit of what's happening. If you recall the last... Uh, at the last meeting, I did talk about the fact that they were going to start commingling or start bringing in inmates and standardize their uh, classifications. So they're going. So that's what they're on. If you saw the protesters and stuff like that, they essentially shut their phones off, so they don't have any problems. This is how you deal with it, and then you let them mellow out for a while. But that was, we knew this was going to happen uh, in October, the month of October. So just bear with them if you see anything and they talk about it. This is what the state is. They run the prison. We don't have anything to do with it. That's their decision. And then later on uh, after the meeting, I'll, I'll bring up Andy. We'll, if I can at the end, we'll, we may want to look at the FCC ruling that just happened for the cell towers, for cell towers. Okay. So with that. Let me get rid of all this paper and go to here. Okay, City Council consent items in the calendar. Do you have any items you pulled? No, just staff. 
Kevin's pulling F. I'm going to pull G. Greg, Robin, or Berwin, anything else? No. Nope. Do I have a motion to approve the rest? Approve the rest. Got a first and a second. Please vote on this item. The motion passes unanimously. And Kevin, you had F? No, I, uh, no, that was uh, Greg. Oh, Greg, I'm sorry. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I just have a question for Eric um, on this, because I didn't have time uh, this week. And uh, Lieutenant Brittick. Yes, sir. On, um, on the uh, EVP, uh, on the emergency vehicle preemption, by us installing this, and, and obviously we all support public safety, will you be able to use this in, in your patrol cars? Correct. So I'm afraid I cannot give you an answer. You'll find out. <laughs> yes, that was my next step. We okay. Look into that and see if there is. Okay. And maybe I can, maybe Chad, do you have any police cars? Because I know it's much higher height. Uh, I've been told it, it it doesn't directly benefit the police because they don't have the transponder inside to activate the equipment. Okay, and that's that's the issue. We do not have that technology in our control. Would you follow up on it? I mean, maybe that technology would be a benefit. Eric, I just remember in my days of being a narc officer that they do have them for narcotics, but you pay a, a price for those. They're, you charge for them. So just so you know that. They do exist, but each individual narcotics officer used to use them on surveillances. But they are through SIB, and SIB used to pay a lot of money for having for car. Okay, I, I will look at that. Okay. Thank you, Eric. Um, that, that's all I had. So with that, I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Have a first and a second. Please vote on this item. Motion passes unanimously. Okay. okay, I pulled GA chat on this. You, we're doing the exception of the North Drive monument sign and to accept it. And I'm just looking at it, and maybe I misunderstood. Were we going to landscape the first island, or is that just going to stay bare like that? There was no landscaping as part of this project at all. It was simply the monument being installed. So, the, the, la the okay, so this had nothing to do with the, the, the last part of that correct so we're not going to add any landscaping or anything around the monument or anything like that's the if you did anything it would have to be low-lying bushes because okay. anything you put in there obviously trees would block the, the view so we just had not planned to bring any water into that area you know because obviously for the other le other medians uh, west of that uh, sign we brought purposely brought um, irrigation lines in because we we're doing trees and shrubs in that area it's such a small median we didn't seem to need to landscape it as far as the the size of it to bring, what we'd have to bring in to bring the service in etc so that's why we just never planned to, okay. to landscape that aesthetically it just looks naked so and i'm not asking for any funds over there but in less than another council member if we could look at maybe some rocks or some type of a, of a scheme in there that would kind of dress that up other than because it looks like it was ribboned for a completion with some landscaping or at least with some colored rocks or anything like that in there so if you could look at that and unless somebody else has any comments on it i'll agree with you on Put it in a ground cover, rock, no maintenance. Yeah, just, yeah, no, no maintenance, just if we can get rocks. And and one other thing, when since he wrote the maintenance issue, um, do we maintain north, or is that right view? Right, right. Can you remind him to clean it, please? Thank you. 
And with that, make a motion to approve. First and second. Please vote on this item. Motion passes unanimously. Okay, on to public comments. This is the time a person in the audience wishing to address the City Council regarding matters not on the agenda may speak. Please complete a speaker card in the back room and present it to the City Clerk so that you may be recognized. And, and Robin, I'm going to, are these your students? Yeah, back there? The you did, didn't you? Thank you for being here. All right. Yeah, thumbs, all right. So public comments. Cards, please. Bonnie Slager. Good evening, Bonnie. Good evening. Oops, I'm sorry. Now it's okay. It's thank my you. Thing, my thing. Um, yes. Uh, again, the uh, Navy birthday ride is October 13th, and uh, I met with the, some of the Navy people today to kind of firm up the plans. And so at 9:30 that morning, Mayor Hoffman, if you'll be available to cut the birthday cake with the um, Rear Admiral. Oh, oh, all right. I, I'm going to be on the NARC, so, but I will be there. Okay. Um, we have uh, the, the two COs at the base and a rear admiral that are going to be here for the day and are going to be riding with us. And um, for people that don't know, a rear admiral is the highest peacetime rank that a Navy officer can attain, and there are only 160 rear admirals. And uh, so one of them is going to be there. So I hope the horses I've arranged for will do well with these people. <laughs> so it's a good thing Nart's going to be there too. Anyway, so we'll have a little birthday doodah at 9.30 and then start on the ride, um, starting here in front and going across the uh, vacant lot and going in at the end of horseless carriage along the fence down and then um, clockwise around the lake so uh, hopefully and will be done by noon so uh, I and then people that are on the ride when they come back are going to get cupcakes it's just a little birthday cake for for cake cutting and so on where's that going to be at uh, right out in front of city hall Oh, the birthday cake's out here. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because we're staging across the street, right. and so we'll just do that right there and uh, where everybody signs in and all that, and then okay. so do that before the ride because everybody isn't going to get back at the same time, so I thought right. it'd be better to do it at the beginning. So right. I hope everybody can join us that day. It should be a lot of fun. The Navy is really very excited about this event. They, they've really, uh, which is kind of fun. So thank you. All right. Thank you, Bonnie. Jeff Cahan. Good evening, Jeff. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Council, residents. I am here to uh, let you know of a couple things that I've got coming up in the next few months. Um, I'm going to start with the Christmas festival. I know that's not till December, but I want to make sure everybody knows to put that on their calendar for the second Saturday. That'll be December 8th. Uh, Breakfast with Santa will now start at 8 a.m. We had so many people the last couple of years, we just couldn't feed them all in two hours. So uh, we're going to start at 8 o'clock and go till 11 and then the festival of course will be all day long with the with the parade at five o'clock so uh, more information on that get your uh, gingerbread recipes ready we will be having a gingerbread house contest and get your ugly sweaters out of the contest out of the closet we will be having the ugly sweater Christmas ugly sweater contest as well so more information on that but just mark that down as a reminder for December 8th uh, November 11th is Veterans Day this year happens to be the 100th anniversary of the end of World War One, so we're going to do some special things this year. Um, some special World War One vintage planes will be flying for our flyover. Uh, we'll have some special vintage World War One songs being sung, as well as our traditional veterans flag retirement uh, ceremony with the retirement uh, fire pit that uh, Hank builds up there. Uh, it's a beautiful ceremony for the veterans to participate in. Um, 
The other thing I want to make sure everybody understands too is this year it lands on a Sunday. Now government agencies recognize it as a holiday on Monday the 12th, but our ceremony is on Sunday, the actual day, November 11th. It'll start at 10 a.m., so I realize being on a Sunday, it's going to conflict with some people's church schedules. So just getting the word out about six weeks early that uh, we are holding it on the Sunday, the actual day of the 11th, starting at 10 a.m., and we should be done about 1130. Um, so uh, mark that down on your calendar, calendars as well, and I will be back in the next few meetings to remind you with some more details on that. So thank you for your support of the memorial. Uh, every day we try to get more and more people to know about it and uh, we've got some exciting things that we're planning on that that we'll talk about in the next months as things develop with uh, ideas and additions because for people that don't know much about it it is not finished what you see up there is a wonderful memorial but it is still living it is still growing we are still trying to raise money to make some additions to recognize others that may not be veterans themselves but support veterans in different ways so the committee uh, meets every month and we work very hard to continue to recognize and uh, celebrate the patriotism that is Norco. So thank you for your support. Thank you, Jeff. Roxana Workizer. Good evening, Roxana. Hi, how are you? Good. Um, I was here quite a few months ago about the sanctuary state taking a vote for the city of Norco, and uh, at that time I told I uh, was told that it would be a while before they could address that issue, and I just wondered how that was coming along. Yeah, we normally don't discuss uh, items on the public comment okay. agenda, but we, we're not, we haven't forgot about it. We're oh. just waiting for situation to present itself, okay? <laughs> New election. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. Mayor, that concludes public comments. Thank you. All right, that's cl closed public comments. And go moving on to item number five, public hearing on a zone change. And Steve, that's yours. Thank you, Mayor. Ms. Members of City Council, this is, these two items before you tonight are part of a proposed shopping center on the south side of 6th Street, east of Sierra Avenue. Uh, the first two items, the conditional use permit for a drive-through and site plan for the design and architecture of the center have already been approved by the Planning Commission. The remaining two items, the zone change and the tenant parcel map, require actions by the City Council and the Planning Commission has made recommendations of approval on both of them. Uh, the first one, the zone change, is for the parcel that is directly south of the existing service station on the southeast corner of Sierra and 6th, uh, which is not being affected by this uh, project. Uh, that parcel, along with the service station, are both in the CG zone, and the rest of the property is in the C4 zone. So the proposed zone change would be to change the existing CG zone on that parcel on Sierra Avenue to C4. Uh, again, the Planning Commission did recommend approval, and this is a charter issue, so it would require a supermajority of the council to approve it. The second item is a tentative parcel map. There are currently six parcels involved in the project. Uh, the parcel map would merge those six parcels and re-subdivide them, or re-subdivide re the uh, acres into three lots to correspond with the three buildings that were approved with the site plan. All of the lots meet the requirements of the uh, municipal code and the proposed uses are consistent, the proposed uses in the center are consistent with the zoning, with the C4 zoning that's being proposed on the one parcel. That's about it. With that, I'll conclude my presentation and answer any questions. This council has a question of staff. Greg? Kevin? <coughs> Um, Steve, so should this pass tonight, the actual project, when it comes to us, we'll have time to look at the architectural review, all that kind of stuff, correct? No, that's all been approved. Okay, so that's all done. Right. So this is the last step in that phase. Correct. Okay, thanks. 
Robin? So uh, I think I'm going to go a little bit further with Kevin's questioning. Can you explain to me why there's a potential project in the works, but we're doing a zoning change after the fact? I, can you explain that to me? Yeah, what, what happens uh, typically when someone comes in for a uh, development proposal, they have to file all of the requisite applications for it. And in this case, there were four required applications, uh, the site plan, the conditional use permit, the zone change, and the tentative parcel map. The, they're all heard by the Planning Commission, and the Planning Commission approves the site plan and the conditional use permit, and then they make recommendations on the zone change and the tentative parcel map um, and those are the only items that come to the city council for approval unless the site plan and the CUP are appealed okay for clarification the only spot that needs a zone change is the the smaller piece that's on Sierra Avenue correct, correct. so I looked at the municipal code today and the differences between a CG and a C4 can you explain for everyone here what are the what's the difference between a C4 and a CG, please? Yeah, they're they're both general commercial zones, uh, and they're actually very similar. Um, the the C4 zone has a greater emphasis on on Western design, and the two primary changes in. Uh, the different uses that are allowed in the zones. Uh, in the CG zone, uh, a service station can, can be approved with a conditional use permit. Uh, that is not a permitted use even with a conditional use permit in the C4 zone. And then the other primary difference in uses is the service of distilled spirits for consumption on site is a permitted use in the C4 zone but it's it requires a conditional use permit in the in the CG zone other than that they're actually very similar so and that's what I found in reading them today so I guess my question is is the zone change really required because of the merger or because of the use it's more because of the merger okay. and and for the issuance of building permits okay. I think that's all I have for right now thank you Berwin uh, nothing at this time so Steve and and I'm kind of like with Kevin this is it seems backwards I'm going to go through the zone change and we get to actually see the the plan out and what's going to happen and what the planning commission did so you're saying all the conditions and all the things have been laid out and approved by the commission by the by the commission correct correct so it and one of the things and this comes back to our presentation and our implementation of this Western Community Energy Program and the push they have for electrical vehicles and charging stations. Right. Have we put a condition on this place for a charging for a charging station? The and yes. What's required because a project is required to be compliant with Title 24 and what Title 24 of the building code requires is that there be designated spaces for fuel efficient and or EV vehicles. Uh, it does not require electric charging station, but it does stations, but it does require that the infrastructure in terms of the uh, conduit be installed for future installation when when uh, that becomes more feasible and uh, but it's not required the stations are not required at this point and the project is not conditioned to put in the stations but it does have to put in the parking designated parking spaces okay so there'll be infrastructure to put there so that can happen right. okay all right any other questions from council i do go ahead greg steve um, the other day when we spoke and i had the same question as council member bash and something it, obviously that's why i called you something didn't sit correct with me but um as a council we can 
ask to see the architectural elevations, the conditions of approval on this project. Can we not? Yes. And would it be possible to still move forward with the project? It, could that, it, no matter how this these zone changes turn out, we could schedule that for like the next meeting to have a presentation on the project. The two, it wouldn't conflict, would it? Well, it, uh, we could do a presentation on what the project is. It wouldn't be for an action by the city council, but we could demonstrate what was approved. And, and the, yeah, the, well, the, the one thing you can't do is change them if it's not uh, acceptable to the applicant. But if you see things that say, hey, we as a city council would like you to see do this, and they say, okay, that's, you can certainly provide your input. But it, it seems in the past we've been able to look at the con the conditions of approval on the project. We have conditions of approval on these tentative on the map, right? Correct. And on the zone change, but we don't have a copy of the conditions of, pr of approval on the overall project. And that, I think we should have the opportunity to review that. And if did, and if we wanted to make changes to those conditions, we could, John. Could we not? Yeah, I don't know exactly what the status of this project is, but but generally speaking, the only way you get to do that is if it's appealed and, they, and it comes to you. Otherwise, the Planning Commission makes the decision. Something seems different to me on this. Uh, again, I'm probably not the best one to, to speak, but I think that the, the quote difference is that normally you don't see a small piece of the project coming to you for a zone change to make it consistent with the rest of the project. And that's that's really what you have here. If, if the zone change weren't required as a result of the project, uh, that again, the small portion of the project, uh, none of this would have come to you. I mean, the, the, the only way the site plan would have come to you because it would have been consistent with the zoning that you've already approved. The site plan would only have come to you if it had been appealed from planning commission decision. I guess, I'm, I'm, go ahead. I'm going to reserve my judgment here for a while, okay, <laughs> um, on that. And, um, but I also want to go back to something I do know on uh, the mayor's comment on uh, electric vehicles or fuel efficient vehicles. Uh, Ted, all that does is, uh, is required just to have str uh, lettering in the parking stalls, okay? So they don't have to put the conduits or anything? Uh, I don't. <clears throat> And unless something's changed here very recently, um, I don't believe conduit um, to those locations is required as part of Title 24. Because unless you've done the submittals through the Edison and, and the whole process, you wouldn't even know what size conduit to place. So, um, yeah, and, the, and I've the, done enough of them where they have not been required. Yeah, the, the conduit doesn't have to go to the designated spaces. It just has to be made available at a point where it could be extended when they decide they're okay, going so, to. Okay, yeah. so, yeah. It's just kicked out of the building. That's all it is. Sad. Uh, I'm going to. Thank you. You know what bothers me about this? Because it's, and I'm going to go back to Councilman Newton's point. We did Narco Village, we looked at the plans. When we've had other plans come here, we look at the plans. And for some reason... Those were appealed, and that's why you saw them. Okay. I, it, it just, it, and, I, and I trust the Planning Commission, but at the same time, it just, it's different. It seems different this way, okay, so so you understand. Unless Kevin or Robin or... I just have one comment. So what I want to make sure, and I want to make sure this gets written down exactly correct, no offense, I want to make sure that we don't have an experience like River Road where all of a sudden over the counter an elevation lifted four feet. I want to make sure that if there's any, I don't know how to say this, any elevation changes that are over the counter because I want to first and foremost I want to protect the neighbors from any kind of a change like that 
because that happened outside of our our purview and I want to make sure absolutely that that does not happen if it's six inches I want to hear about it before it goes through to, to uh, gets put into place and and no offense again Berwyn is there any bus station anywhere near there at all no they they all disappeared off of sixth street okay a few years ago but I will back you up on that elevation changes and I've already talked to Steve yesterday the, the wall is going to be 10 feet on both sides so I take it that that they won't put six inches or four feet of dirt on the building side because right. that would reduce the side but I'm like you I don't want any surprises when this thing is built I, I and everything because we're still not done with all the surprises over on River Road. I think the council can make it clear and probably already have that any changes, even if they're technical changes from the map uh, that weren't approved, at least need to go back to the Planning Commission. Okay. Is, is, have I made it clear enough that along with that that uh, and again I, I'm saying this very respectfully to you I just want to I just don't want to have the same situation we had over there where all of a sudden it's four feet six feet higher thank you Ted, okay. go ahead Greg one, one more thing to back up on Kevin Steve so knowing on that wall being 10 foot make sure that that note is 10 foot high from finished surface Mm. All right, with that, no other questions? With that, this is a public hearing. I'm going to open the public hearing. Are there any cards? No cards, Mayor. With no cards, close the public hearing, bring it back to the council for the dais. Any questions of staff or any further comments? Greg? I'll make a motion to approve. Second. An ordinance of the City Council of the City of Norco approving zone change 2018-03 to change the existing commercial general CG zone to commercial C4 zone on 0.44 acres on the east side of CR Avenue south of 6th Street. Zone change 2018-03 APN 131-200-002. Just for clarification, there's going to be two motions on this. Uh, one that John just read, and then we'll have to have a second one on the tentative parcel map. Please vote on this motion. And you're voting on the uh, the ordinance 1041, right? Motion passes unanimously. A motion on the resolution. Motion on the resolution. Second. You have a first and a second. This is to adopt resolution number 218 57, approving tentative parcel map 37549. Please vote on this item. Motion passes unanimously. All right, moving on to City Council, City Manager, Staff, Communications. Bruin, start down there. Yeah, I just want to say that uh, March is going to have a busy month this month. We've got about five uh, places to go. The Navy Yard that we've got to set up at the uh, Horse Affair this weekend. Next week we have to go to Harupa for a display. And uh, what's that other one, Mr. Mayor? I know we got five. <laughs> you volunteered me again. Um, <laughs> and I turned my phone off. I don't have my calendar on. No, I don't. I but anyway, we're going to be busy. So if you see the NART display is sitting around, we'll go by and say hi to the people. Thank you. Robin? Uh, Kevin? 
few things. Uh, uh, first off, I, you, Bonnie, the ride you're doing, it, I was looking at some pictures of the first ride, and you and Berwin were actually the trail bosses. And uh, it was kind of cool to see that, so I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing that again. Um, just a reminder, December 7th, uh, we have that ceremony coming up at the Navy base. This Saturday, Empty Bowls, it's a Corona Norco settlement house. Um, it would be nice if uh, people could show up and buy a bowl. Um, October 20th, you have the uh, Sports Sisters doing the Combat Cancer Walk. I know, I think pretty much everybody here has been to every one of those, and that's at uh, Norco College. Um, we have a wheelchair basketball tournament the 19th. Um, 19th, 20, 21st, and 19th, we play a game at the prison. So one of the things I w I'm wondering, and I have a hunch that uh, uh, Ted's going to bring this up, is I would, I would, I would actually like to kind of know publicly what the status of the prison is. If we can just get a brief report on what that prisoner change means, because uh, a lot of people don't know. We'll, um, we'll know October. I have yeah, meeting yeah. next Tuesday. That's what I mean. Is maybe, wet, and it doesn't have to be right away, but at your convenience. And and then the other one, of course, is, and I think, Ted, you're going to talk about this, is the cell tower issue, which I'll leave that to you. Thank you very much. And uh, one other thing, I'm sorry. Forest Trader. This is about Norco. Everybody get a copy of this, and uh, I'm going to brag a little bit. My wife donated several of the photographs to this, and I think they're excellent. But anyway, if you want, go ahead and look in this. It's a very nice, uh, very nice uh, booklet. Greg? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Put a flyer out on the table out front. Uh, the Norco College is going to, on October 19th, have a uh, seminar on uh, human trafficking. And so the information's out in the front. You may find all that fairly interesting. Thank you. Oh, John. Thank you. Uh, what I, this just happened. Um, the Federal Communications Commission decided, if you recall, SB 649 last year, which we fought, and both Councilman Bash and Hannah were up in Sacramento, and it actually got passed. It, re it involves the cell towers, uh, and these are the smaller micro towers that they can, we're going to put all over the state and uh, really cause issues. My concern is that the telecommunication industry has now just bypassed the state in its application and gone directly to the feds. And I would like to see us agendize this for a future meeting or formulate a plan of action to communicate with our uh, federal officials and to, to express our opposition. Uh, Parks director can probably tell you how much money we get right now, how much how much income we get from cell tower rentals is forty thousand plus. City, we generate probably close to two hundred thousand. Two hundred thousand dollars in cell tower revenue things. So this will have an impact on the city. And uh, Andy, do you want to handle it as an agenda item uh, or communication to Congressman? Wait, can Calvert? we send a letter right away? Or I would send a letter right to Calvert. Yes. I do want to remind the city council that uh, I believe the League of California Cities did send a letter opposing this uh, this measure at the federal level. Notwithstanding that, um, uh, the uh, legislation did go through. Um, but be glad to draft the city, uh, city council letter to, uh, you know, sure, to Ken Calvert and uh, perhaps. He's running um, for office. We have six weeks to try to twist his arm. Yeah. Yeah, send a letter. I mean, like I say. Well, nothing else. Let's, Andy, let's formulate a letter to him expressing our displeasure with that. If you can, I'll meet with you. Yeah, I, I agendize in it. The FCC is, they do what they want to do. And uh, so let me go around the room. Cheryl, anything? The last day to register to vote, Cheryl? I mean, last day to, re yeah, to register. Yes, last day to register to vote for the November 6th election is Monday, October 22nd. Come on up. You can quick. register uh, at the city clerk's office at City Hall. Uh, you can register online. Uh, but anyone that's interested in more information can give me a call. Okay. Matt, anything for IT? Thank you. Chad, cleanup day. 
Yes, that's what I was going to talk about. Uh, October 20th is our next cleanup day, dump day, uh, up at Ingalls uh, Park. So if you have uh, shredding materials that you want to bring, if you have e-waste, if you have metals or just general debris, bring it on by. It's between 8 to 12 uh, on October 20th. A um, couple other items. Uh, as far as improvement projects, I uh, want to give you an update on the work that the City of Corona is doing on our behalf in paving a couple different sections. The contractor has completed the initial paving of Hamner Avenue from the city boundary to uh, uh, Hidden Valley Road. They still need to do the, the uh, loops and the uh, striping, but it already looks 100% better than it did, so they're really glad to see that's moving forward, and they, they did a good job on it. Um, we also finished the paving on Corona Avenue between 1st and 2nd. Uh, still doing I still need to do the striping I believe uh, that has been finished but basically it's a whole new nice road and I, the, the residents are very excited to have it there so that's good to have that done plus a new storm drain was put in as part of that project so that was the primary project that we did uh, so again we're get, trying to get as many projects up and going and, and moving forward so we have plenty plenty air out there right now and I apologize for any traffic delays on the many of the roads we have water main projects going on etc but uh, they're all vital and important and, and will be a benefit to everybody once they're done so and, and I'll and each one of those every one of those roads gets paved when they're done so there's a lot of roads we're working on this year to getting redone. Uh, the slurry seal project has just started. Uh, they start on Tuesday officially slurrying and then they stopped because they the rain that didn't show up. So uh, they're projected to start again on Friday uh, and they'll keep moving on that. So uh, that'll have a lot of benefits once we get that finished too. But that's a update on our current project. And you're going to demonstrate or present a demonstration on on how to access that the CIP project. The what's that called? The yeah, the EIS system. No, the other one that you have. Ma the one that you have where it's online. You can check. Right. Yep. Yes. Yep. Absolutely. It's a good. That's, go go I ahead. I have a question for Chad. Uh, would you give a schedule update on uh, Hamner Avenue? for um, third to fourth on our infrastructure and repaving schedule. Sure. I I asked the contractor for an update today since they've been ahead of schedule. Um, I believe they provided that to my engineer late this evening. I have not a chance to review it to find out exactly when they're going to begin physical paving, but I can certainly send council an update via email when, once I get a chance to look at it. Okay. And then one last question on the uh, the slurry ceiling and crack ceiling. Is that all under one contract? Correct. Okay. Could Thank I ask you. A, Kevin, you're, you're, I want to ask a question. You're biting it. You're jumping at the bit. Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. One contractor, right? Crack yes, ceiling contractor. and slurry. Correct. One contractor. One contractor. Okay. They only have a sub for the paving. I mean, sorry, the uh, striping. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> totally on a different subject. I talked to you about Dale's about putting stop signs in and uh, it came back from the city engineer that even though there were three feeder streets into it, I'm wondering if we can agendize Dale's to look at maybe putting stop signs there. Pardon? At Dale's? In other words, no, no, this is for Dales stop and signs. Pacer is what Dale's and Pacer. In other words, it's sort of a racetrack and there's a lot of feeders into it and I'm wondering if we can agendize it to maybe look at putting a stop sign in there. We did that with Willow and I'm wondering if we can maybe do it uh, at Dale's because it is quite a, I sat there for about two hours and it's quite a speed, quite a speedway. I don't have a problem asking for Gendai's, but I think we have a Streets and Trails Utility Commission that would probably look at that. We've done it before. They, you're shaking your head. You have to have a traffic engineer and look at it. And we've already had the city engineer look at it. He's given an informal report about his opinion about whether a, a stop sign is warranted there, which he's already indicated it's not. So it would be something that the council would have to review. Okay. And overturn his um, justification for not doing it. We had the same thing at Willow. Correct. And, and we disagreed with him then, but I'm just so, do we just direct it to Streets and Trails, ask them to agendize it? Well, well if he's already, they've already had the engineer look at it, right. so. It, it's comes, you can, we can agendize it for future. Yeah, that's we, what I'd like to do. That's what you want to do. Okay. So, uh, Kevin made a motion to agendize it. Second. All in favor? Councilmember Newton? Yes. Councilmember Bash? Yes. Councilmember Hanna? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Grunmeyer? Mayor Hoffman? Yes. Motion carries. Okay, Steve. Uh, <laughs> Got by pretty easy on this one. Ryan, anything? Yes, nothing coming up? Nothing in the Parks World? 
<laughs> no, no, but I would like you to mention the fact uh, what we did for uh, for George Ingalls. Yeah, um, actually, we were uh, honored. Uh, the, the city of Grand Terrace um, had, and they they have what they call as a freedom wall, and uh, they had asked for uh, a nomination from the city of Norco of a patriot uh, from our community to be added to their community wall. And so our committee uh, took a look at it and obviously uh, George is, uh, uh, was the person who we selected to submit to them. So on November 11th of this year, uh, George uh, will be added to the Freedom Wall uh, in the city of Grand Terrace. Uh, so it's quite an honor for him, uh, for his family, and uh, for our community, for them to honor someone like him in their community. So it was a nice gesture by the city of Grand Terrace. Thank you. And he will have the designation as Medal of Honor recipient on his... That, that's correct. Thank you. Gina, anything? Oh, doing a good job then. Thank you. Since your partner's not there, anything? Eric? No, sir. You guys are doing a good job of keeping the city quiet. All right. I just jinxed you, didn't I? Andy, anything? Nothing. Nothing? All right. With that, meeting's adjourned.